The sword has been used to bring a fall to empire since ancient times and a symbol of power and strength. Making a sword requires a lot of hard work and dedication and is often considered by some cultures to be a sacred process. Warriors equipped with this tool are known for displaying great skill and bravery. It has quite the advantage over firearms since you can take out zombies in complete silence. From swords that give you a tactical advantage in escaping zombies to swords capable of swift annihilation, here are the best forged swords for the zombie apocalypse. But first, we'd like to give a quick shout out to all of our subscribers out there requesting more zombie videos. We hope you like this one. Be sure to leave us a request on which zombie video to make next, and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 11. The Scottish Jerk The Scottish Jerk has been a trusted sidearm for many Highlander soldiers since the 1800s, and should be considered a proper choice during the zombie apocalypse. Short and lightweight, it can be fairly well concealed and pack a lot of punch for its size. It typically has a 13-inch blade and are made from 1055 carbon steel. Only requiring one hand, you can utilize your other hand for using things such as flashlights, a pistol, and of course, another sword. A true Scotsman is never caught without a kilt or his dirk, and he might even need it for simple tasks like spreading butter on his toast. It can also do a pretty good job slicing zombies into pieces. Modern day replicas might even be more effective, and sharpening methods with modern tools can certainly give you an edge to fight with. Number 10. The Gladius In the zombie apocalypse, you'll essentially be a gladiator, fighting for your right to survive. The chosen sword of the infamous Roman legion, the Gladius, was a standard issue sword for that army that nearly took over the world. The wounds left over by these blades were enough to strike fear in the hearts of the enemy who were accustomed to using arrows and javelins. Typically designed as a thrusting weapon, it's been shown to slash pretty well also, and has been proven in actual cutting tests. A well-placed thrust to a zombie's head should do the job fairly quickly. You can even consider cutting the ankles to immobilize one. It can be used quite effectively with a shield, and not a whole lot of training is needed. Also a one-handed sword, it can be transported fairly easily, and since the blade is shorter, you're less likely to accidentally hit a member of your zombie apocalypse team. Number 9. The Qatar The Qatar is sometimes described as a dagger, but can't have blades long enough to be described as a sword. Originated in Southeast Asia, primarily in India, the Qatar is a vicious stabbing weapon, sometimes used for ceremonial purposes. But during the times of the zombie apocalypse, it can certainly get the job done against zombies. Put to the test in modern times, it's displayed slashing ability against anything like rope and bamboo. The blades are typically 12 to 35 inches in length and are in a triangular shape. Similar to motions associated with boxing, a well-trained fighter could do an immense amount of damage with two of these, and different fighting techniques with these can be learned by studying Indian martial arts. They were used by the upper class of India for various reasons, as well as a symbol of status. During the time of the Mughal Empire, they were used to hunt down tigers, so we can imagine you can use them to fight off zombies. Number 8. Ninja Swords While they might share some resemblance to samurai swords, ninja swords are actually quite different. Swords used by ninjas are normally straighter and shorter than samurai katanas. The swords that were found that belong to the ninjas come from the Edo period. Other ninja swords before this time have not been discovered. Ninjas aren't always going for looks here in this case because people normally hide the fact that they're a ninja. Ninjas aren't always going for the best looking swords because typically ninjas like to hide. Ninjas could even use their sword somewhat like a ladder like we see here. Then once he's over the wall, he can pull up the sword with the strap attached to him. If the sword was curved, it might be hard to pull off this maneuver, but it seems like a great method to escape from zombies. Number 7. The Two-Handed Sword Just the sight of one of these may cause looters to run away in fear, and it'd be one beast to go against in the zombie apocalypse. Bigger and heavier swords would become popular after the fall of the Roman Empire. This would lead to the development of the two-handed sword. In an effort to break through chainmail and plate armor, the sword started to become like a sharp club in a sense. The two-handed sword would likely be best utilized by people with good upper body strength and have practiced swinging this thing around a few times. Knights would spend countless hours dueling each other with these, so it might be kind of hard to get on their level. The heavy two-handers will likely work best to fight off other humans or for intimidation purposes. It shouldn't do too bad against zombies either, but it might get a little bit tiring swinging that thing around all the time. Make sure you don't whack any of your friends either. Number 6. Butterfly Sword 
typically measured about the size of a human forearm. These swords can be concealed fairly easily within someone's sleeve or boots. Most of the time, they're pretty heavy, but balanced for combat. The added weight of the cold hard steel will come with added power. This makes it a decent option for chopping firewood or against zombies that are getting too close. Butterfly swords are made for close quarter combat by Chinese monks and can be used as a pair of brass knuckles in the right situation or for a finishing move. They're also designed so that the owner can keep two inside their hilt or even use both with one hand. The mobility and the convenience will make it a good sword to go with during the zombie apocalypse, but there are definitely more swords that can do a little bit more damage. Number 5. The Kopesh Sickle Sword One of the first designs for an ancient sword was the Kopesh Sickle Sword that you might have seen in the Scorpion King movies. The sickle design comes from a tool farmers used in ancient Egypt to cut grain, so it should be useful if you decide to establish an agricultural settlement. Although it was typically made from bronze in ancient times, modern day steel versions can do a lot of damage against zombies. Number 4. The Rapier Although short swords have their advantage, longer blades such as rapiers can help keep the zombies at a distance and provide better protection for your hands when getting some dirty work done. Made famous by French Protestants during the 15 and 1600s, they were often used in duels by people such as the Three Musketeers and the woman La Maupin. She used it to her advantage to win many fights while still outnumbered. It's the chosen sword for gentlemen and definitely requires some practice in order to operate effectively. But with a little bit of time, this long bladed one handed sword can seriously kick some butt. The hilt is also designed in a complex manner, which is not only decorative, but also used to protect the hands. Cup hilts like we see here are a good way to go, and you might prefer a thicker blade during the zombie apocalypse. One of the main setbacks, however, would be that it doesn't seem to serve much purpose outside of fighting. Number 3. Katana the katana has very much potential to be the best zombie apocalypse sword out there if it wasn't for a few setbacks. It's arguably the best slashing weapon out there, but it takes a lot of maintenance in order for it to retain its sharpness and durability. Blacksmiths heat and fold iron hundreds of times in order to ensure that there are no weak points in the blade. Considered to be the spirit of the samurai, the sword can consist of thousands of layers of steel and the forging site was considered to be sacred. In the end, it's as beautiful as it is dangerous. Skilled samurai would also be able to make three cuts in the same time it would take one swing from a European sword. Taking the necessary amount of time to clean a samurai sword would be necessary during the zombie apocalypse or may prove to be a pricey investment that doesn't work out. A real handcrafted samurai sword can go for thousands of dollars and wouldn't be suitable for other practical uses. Number 2. The Cutlass Similar to the rapier in a sense, it was the preferred sword by pirates of the Caribbean and throughout history as a favorite among sailors. Its ability to be used as a machete should not be overlooked and explorers of the new world use it to clear out vegetation. Privateers who were sailing the seven seas and looting villages and ships would often prefer a cutlass over an inaccurate loud firearm. This should be the same case during the zombie apocalypse. This 19th century French naval cutlass would appear to be about the right shape and size to take care of business. And number one, but first, in the comments section, let us know which sword you think is the best and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number one, the scimitar. The scimitar might be just what you need for the zombie apocalypse if you're looking for a heavy slashing weapon that can do a bit of damage. In general, curved blades will be much better at slashing than straight blades. Straight blades are typically preferred if you need to stab something. Scimitars, on the other hand, can serve as execution or beheading swords in the Middle East, so one good slash could do the trick depending on how sharp your blade is. Scimitars have also been demonstrated as a good chopper, meaning that it should have no issues cutting up tree branches to help you gather some firewood or even to help you butcher an animal. Modern day designs of what's called the Reaver Cleaver are used in a similar fashion to the scimitar and have received positive reviews on sites like swordbuyersguide.com. Weighing about 5 pounds or more than 2 kilograms, they're said to come razor sharp, so be careful. If you choose to travel by horseback, make sure you choose a one-handed model which can basically let you slash and carry on with your day.